rains and rugged terrain are hindering rescue efforts in the jagged mountains towering over the Croatian seaside town of Dubrovnik. Commerce Secretary Ron Brown and 32 others were on a military plane that crashed today in a violent storm. There are no known survivors at this time. Croatian Air Control says the plane was cleared to land at Dubrovnik's airport, but instead it apparently went off course and slammed into a cloud-shrouded mountain. Brown's party was arriving from Tuzla, where U.S. peacekeeping troops are based. The formal position of the government that Secretary Brown is presumed dead? That is the is formal that? position of the government that... Uh, uh, the aircraft uh, that he was on appears to be um, the aircraft that uh, has gone down in the mountains uh, um, in Croatia. And uh, what we're doing now, of course, is trying to confirm as many of the facts as we can about this. Later, the State Department clarified that remark, saying its formal position is that Ron Brown is missing. CNN's Jackie Shemansky has more on the Brown trip. A commercial mission brought U.S. Secretary of Commerce Ron Brown to the Balkans. The trip to Bosnia and Croatia was meant to complement the U.S.-led military mission by emphasizing the civilian side of the Dayton Peace Accord. Secretary Brown and a delegation of high-level U.S. executives first traveled to Tuzla on board the very same plane that U.S. Defense Secretary William Perry flew in just last week. The plane is the Air Force equivalent of a Boeing 737. The delegation was briefed on the military success of the peace process. Secretary Brown met with U.S. troops at a base camp not far from a former confrontation line. The tour was then to continue on to the coastal port of Dubrovnik in Croatia. Over 30 people were believed on board the secretary's plane, including government personnel and business executives. U.S. Ambassador Peter Galbraith awaited the Commerce Secretary's arrival in Dubrovnik. But five minutes short of the anticipated landing, Croatian authorities report losing radar contact with Brown's plane. Weather was poor. A search and rescue effort was mounted by both NATO forces in the region and Croatian authorities. NATO helicopters covered both the mountainous area around Dubrovnik and the Adriatic Sea. The plane apparently hit a mountain, and Croatian searchers have found both wreckage and bodies. Jackie Shemansky, CNN, Tuzla. The Pentagon is offering no immediate clues about the cause of the crash. The military says there are no indications of a problem other than the obvious bad weather. Here is the runway structure out here. The aircraft approach would have been from this direction. Okay, we're heading now, we're to the west side toward Dubrovnik. We're heading to the southeast and landing in the direction of 120. I can't tell you why they were where they were, nor am I in a position to speculate. Uh, we, that's exactly what General Coolidge and the Accident Board will attempt to determine. The Pentagon does say there is no evidence that hostile fire hit the aircraft. President Clinton is canceling his public schedule for tomorrow. He will still sign legislation, but with less ceremony. A somber president and first lady went to the Brown home in Washington to comfort the family. As chairman of the Democratic National Committee, Brown was influential in steering Bill Clinton to the White House in 1992. Later, the president traveled to the Commerce Department to reassure workers there. He called Brown one of the best advisors he ever had. Mr. Clinton was apparently Amen. moved, clearly moved, over the apparent loss of a close friend. His favorite uh, scripture verse was that wonderful verse from Isaiah. They who wait upon the Lord shall have their strength renewed. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and faint not. Well, Ron Brown walked and ran and flew through life. Let's look at Clinton walking the walk from last Thursday in his memorial uh, service for Ron Brown. Go ahead and roll that tape if we have it. This is the one where, look, he's laughing, telling a big joke, sees the camera. Oh, no, let's cry. <laughs> have you seen this? <laughs> yeah. 
Is this not incredible? Have you all seen that before? I just, I just, how many of you had seen this before this program? This, oh, then, this is last Thursday, ladies and gentlemen. Some of them haven't seen it. I bet many of you haven't either. Last Thursday, there's a memorial service to Ron Brown. Bill Clinton is leaving it, and, and he's left, laughing it up, telling big-time jokes uh, with his uh, Secret Service person, whoever is standing next to him, and spots a camera way over there, and just <laughs> watch it in slow motion, and you'll see it. Uh, well, here it is, once again. Bright sunny day. Look at everybody smiling here. See the cl the president. You'll see him in just a moment, laughing, telling a joke. Spots the camera. Watch the face. Watch this. Now here comes a tear. We got a tear here, and the other guy's still laughing. If you know, I mean, he doesn't even know what's going on. April third, nineteen ninety-six, an Air Force jet carrying Secretary of Commerce Ron Brown and thirty-four others crashed while landing near Croatia's Dubrovnik airport. At the time of Ron Brown's death, he was under criminal investigation by an independent counsel. That investigation quickly ended with Brown's death, though Brown's son, Michael, and Brown's partner later pleaded guilty to charges related to Brown's alleged wrongdoing. Then in late 1997, stunning revelations were made in the Pittsburgh Tribune Review. It was a series of investigative reports by reporter Christopher Ruddy. The Tribune Review reported that three military pathologists believed there was significant evidence that Brown may have suffered a gunshot wound to his head and that the cause of death as an accident could not be supported unless... It was an autopsy. No autopsy was ever conducted on Brown. And when Brown's body was examined at Dover Air Force Base, officials found what appeared to be a perfectly round hole, consistent with a 45 caliber gunshot wound. And x-rays also indicated possible bullet fragments in Brown's head. These and other disclosures have become a focus of interest with Judicial Watch, a public interest law firm headed by Larry Clayman. And joining us today to discuss the cover-up of Ron Brown's death is Judicial Watch Chairman Larry Clayman and Newsmax.com editor Christopher Ruddy. Larry, let's start with you. You and your organization first uncovered the facts relating to the scandal that is known as China Gate and Ron Brown at Commerce. How was Brown involved in, in all of these stories? Brown was the mastermind, the implementer of the scheme to sell off seats on trade missions, to sell high technology to the Chinese and others. This was devised by Hillary Clinton, that business partner you talked about in Orlando Hill, has testified to this. No one refuted it. The court dared the White House to come in with other evidence. It hasn't occurred. So consequently, when Ron Brown's plane goes down during the week that he had been scheduled to testify to Judicial Watch, but got a postponement to go to Bosnia instead, it obviously raises a lot of questions. Larry, you've spoken with Brown's business partner, as you say, Nalanda Hill. Hill told you what had happened to Brown in the days just before his death, as the independent counsel Daniel Pearson was closing in on Brown, Brown went to see Bill Clinton. That's right. What happened was this. This independent counsel started before this plane crash occurred. This counsel was a Democrat out of Miami. Brown went to Clinton, according to Nolanda Hill, and said to Clinton, unless you get this Democrat independent counsel off my back, I may have to turn state's evidence. I may have to cooperate. And 
Clinton's response was barefoot, according to Melinda Hill, up on a footstool, which is his way of walking around the White House. Mm -hmm. Arms crossed. That's nice. <laughs> Almost like an organized crime figure. That's nice. The icy chill in the room was so great that Melinda Hill has told us that Ron Brown just walked out at that point. And it was within the next two weeks that he was sent to Bosnia. He did not know that he was scheduled to go there. Never heard it. As a reporter, I've never heard it before. This plane crash came at a very convenient time. As a former federal prosecutor, Larry, should this have been dismissed so easily as just another accident? It can't be dismissed as an accident. It can't be dismissed because it's irrefutable. As we represent Kathleen Janowski and Steve Cogswell, two people in the Armed Forces Institute of Pathology that actually played a role in investigating the death. It cannot be disputed that what you have in Ron Brown's head is a bullet hole. Chris Rudding, you broke this story in that great newspaper, the Pittsburgh Tribune Review. And your articles continue on Newsmax.com. I want you to explain to us now how Brown could have been shot considering the plane had crashed. George, I think everything people have heard about this case is probably um, false or misleading, um, although certainly that the press and the government has, has told. We know that the Air Force report on the crash states categorically that the weather was not bad, that the weather did not contribute to the crash. You ask your average American, they thought that it was the worst weather ever in Croatia that day. Um, second, the Air Force, for the first time in their history of airplane investigations on friendly territory, decided they were immediately going to declare this an accident without a full investigation. And then the third thing, George, I think is the most disturbing. When the military officials at Dover Air Force Base examined Brown's body, they found what appeared to be a gunshot wound. Now, we don't know how that gunshot wound was made, um, but you do an autopsy, you do an investigation, and instead, what they did was a cover-up of the facts of this case. Chris, Larry, it seems shocking to me that they found this evidence. Did anybody call the FBI? Did anyone contact the Brown family? Or were, Why wasn't there an autopsy? Why didn't they conduct one? No, as a matter of fact, it was worse than that. And, of course, we get this story about what happened with Clinton in the Oval Office from Nolanda Hill. And it's interesting enough that Nolanda Hill is the only one who winds up getting indicted and having to do hard time. Michael Brown gets off scot-free. Other people don't go to jail. The land of Hill, the person that comes forward and tells the story about Brown's encounter with the president, goes to jail. And let's underscore, George, this was a Commerce Secretary, a member of yes. the President's Cabinet. Yes. There was an evident, there was significant evidence of homicide. All of the pathologists agreed at Dover Air Force Base, there was apparent gunshot wound that needed an autopsy. No autopsy was conducted. It is standard procedure that an autopsy be conducted. 